Tiny Core Linux is one of those operating systems that feels almost mythical when you first hear about it. The kind of distro that sounds too extreme to be real, too lightweight to be functional, and too tiny to actually deliver a useful computing experience. But the deeper you dive into it, the more you realize that Tiny Core Linux isn't just a lightweight distro. It's a masterpiece of minimalism, an engineering marvel designed around the philosophy that the user should control everything, every component, every dependency, every byte. This script will take you on a detailed journey through the world of Tiny Core Linux, breaking down its background, its philosophy, the way it works, why it's so incredibly fast and lightweight, how it compares to other lightweight distributions, how people actually use it, why it's loved by hardcore Linux fans, and why it might be one of the most important niche distros ever created. And throughout it all, the goal of this video script is to make the viewer understand that Tiny Core Linux is not just a tiny operating system, but a window into a different way of thinking about Linux itself. When someone first encounters Tiny Core Linux, they almost always react with disbelief. How can a modern Linux distribution be just 11 megabytes in size? How can you boot a graphical environment with such a tiny ISO? How can the entire thing run completely in RAM? How can something that small still support installing apps, setting up desktop environments, managing packages, and even running on old computers from 20 or 25 years ago? The idea seems impossible until you realize that Tiny Core Linux is built on an extremely intentional vision. Every part of the system is handcrafted to be modular, efficient, and minimal. Nothing unnecessary is included, and everything you add is stacked on top based on your choices. Unlike big mainstream distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, Linux, Mint, or Manjaro, which include hundreds of packages by default and run dozens of background processes, Tiny Core Linux starts with almost nothing. It gives you a foundation, a kernel, a core set of tools, and a simple GUI if you choose Core Plus or Tiny Core, and then the rest is up to you. The philosophy behind Tiny Core Linux traces back to the idea that many Linux systems have become bloated over the years. As hardware becomes more powerful, developers tend to pack more features into distros. More services start automatically, more dependencies get installed, more animations, more background tasks, more everything. But Tiny Core isn't interested in following that trend. Instead, it focuses on absolute minimalism, proving that you can still have a fast and responsive system without all of the fluff. This makes Tiny Core incredibly appealing to people who want full control over their system. Hobbyists building custom environments, developers testing lightweight environments, people refurbishing old computers, and technicians who want a fast portable OS that can run from a USB on almost anything. To appreciate Tiny Core Linux, you first have to understand that it actually comes in three versions. The smallest version called Core, which is only 11 megabytes and boots to a terminal. The middle version called Tiny Core, which is about 16 megabytes and includes a minimal FLTK-based graphical desktop environment. And the larger version called Core Plus, which is around 100 megabytes and includes additional tools. Wi-Fi support, non-US keyboard layouts, and installation utilities. Even the largest version is tiny compared to normal Linux distributions, which often start at 1 to 3 gigabytes. But Tiny Core's modular structure means you can add only what you need. If you want a lightweight web browser, you add it. If you want a window manager that looks different, you add it. If you want to run powerful software, you install only the dependencies required. Nothing is forced onto your system unless you choose it. One thing people are often surprised to learn is that Tiny Core Linux does not work like traditional Linux distributions when it comes to persistence. Instead of permanently installing everything onto your drive, Tiny Core loads itself into RAM every time you boot. This is one of the reasons why it is so fast. When your entire OS runs from RAM, applications launch instantly, the system responds instantly, and there's almost no delay at all. But it also means that persistence must be handled carefully, either by saving configurations or specifying what files you want to store. This design allows Tiny Core to work incredibly well as a portable system. You can carry it on a USB stick, plug it into any computer, and instantly boot a clean, blazing fast environment. Because it runs in RAM and doesn't rely heavily on writing to storage, it is also incredibly durable for flash drives. Tech professionals love using Tiny Core as a recovery system, a testing environment, or a portable toolkit. Another fascinating thing about Tiny Core Linux 
is its package manager, known as TCE load. It functions differently from popular package managers like APT, DNF, Pacman, or Zipper. Instead of installing packages into the system permanently, Tiny Core loads them into your RAM, unless you explicitly choose a persistent installation. The extensions you install are also highly optimized for size, which is why you will see extremely small builds of libraries and software. Because of this, Tiny Core stays lightweight even after adding applications. But this also means that the user needs to think differently. Tiny Core expects you to understand dependencies and choose what to load. This isn't a beginner-friendly experience. Instead, it's a system built for people who want to understand Linux deeply. Throughout the years, Tiny Core Linux has earned a reputation as one of the fastest operating systems ever made. If you've ever used a modern Linux distro, like Ubuntu or Fedora on an older computer, you've probably noticed sluggish performance, slow boot times, and heavy resource usage. But Tiny Core flips the script. Even on machines with 256 megabytes or 512 megabytes of RAM, Tiny Core can run smoothly, and on modern machines, it becomes outrageously fast. Boot times are often measured in seconds, not minutes. Some users report boot times under 5 seconds. In a world where operating systems are becoming bigger, heavier, and more demanding, Tiny Core is like stepping into a time machine, reminding us that software can be efficient and beautiful at the same time. One of the most interesting things about Tiny Core Linux is how it challenges the idea of what a desktop should look like. The default interface is very minimal with a simple dock, a lightweight window manager, and a transparent philosophy that functionality matters more than aesthetics. But because everything is modular, users can install different window managers like IceWM, JWM, Fluxbox, Openbox, or even full desktop environments like XFCE or LXQT, though that often defeats the purpose of the distro. The beauty of Tiny Core lies in its simplicity, not in trying to copy Windows or Mac OS, but in offering a canvas where you can build your own environment exactly the way you want. Throughout online communities, you will find countless stories of people repurposing ancient computers using Tiny Core. Linux, old laptops from the early 2000s, suddenly become fast and usable again. Systems that cannot run Windows 10, 11, or even some modern Linux distros find new life with Tiny Core. This makes the distro incredibly valuable for education, nonprofits, developing countries, or anyone who wants to reduce e-waste. Because Tiny Core uses so few resources, it helps keep old hardware out of landfills. Because it loads into RAM, it doesn't care if the computer storage is slow or damaged. People even use Tiny Core on embedded devices, thin clients, Raspberry Pi boards, and virtual machines. But while Tiny Core Linux is powerful, it isn't designed to be user-friendly. This is a crucial point, like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or Zorin OS, which aim to be beginner-friendly alternatives to Windows. Tiny Core is aimed at power users. This is not a distribution where everything works out of the box. Instead, it expects you to configure things manually. Even installing Wi-Fi on the core version requires advanced configuration. This difficulty is intentional because Tiny Core isn't trying to be mainstream. It aims to be efficient and customizable above all else. The users who love Tiny Core are often people who enjoy tinkering, learning, and controlling every aspect of their computing environment. Another interesting aspect is how Tiny Core updates and extensions work. The system's modularity means updates are extremely small and fast. There's no massive update manager, no gigabytes of downloads, no heavy background processes, Everything is lean and simple. This makes Tiny Core incredibly efficient for situations where bandwidth is limited. In remote areas or when using mobile hotspots, Tiny Core is one of the best distros for staying up to date without wasting data. As Tiny Core grew in popularity, more people began experimenting with turning it into a full desktop system. Users have built their own custom versions that include browsers like Firefox or Chromium, video players like VLC, editors like VS Code, and even lightweight gaming setups for retro emulation. Of course, once you start adding too much, the system becomes heavier, but this freedom is part of the magic. You can choose the level of minimalism you want. You can make Tiny Core a simple rescue environment, a coding machine, a lightweight server, or even a daily driver if you are skilled enough. One of the most powerful concepts in Tiny Core is the separation between the base system and user-installed extensions. 
Unlike traditional Linux distros where changes can slowly accumulate and cause bloat, Tiny Core stays clean every time you boot because the core system is read-only in RAM. This reduces the chances of corruption, dependency conflicts, or unstable updates. It's almost impossible to break the base system. If something goes wrong, you reboot and everything resets. This makes Tiny Core an extremely reliable platform for experiments. Developers love using it because they can test software without worrying about messing up their environment. Security is another hidden advantage of Tiny Core Linux. Its minimal attack surface makes it naturally secure. There are fewer packages, fewer services, and fewer potential vulnerabilities. A smaller code base means fewer opportunities for exploits. Running entirely in RAM also reduces certain security risks. Of course, Tiny Core does not include heavy security tools by default. The user must manage that. But in the hands of someone skilled, Tiny Core can be turned into a very hardened environment. One of the most impressive feats of Tiny Core Linux is how it manages to include so much functionality in such a tiny footprint. Ow. The developers focus on efficiency using lightweight libraries and tools, compressing binaries and avoiding unnecessary components. For example, the graphical environment uses FLTK, one of the lightest GUI toolkits available. The window manager is extremely small. Core utilities are optimized. Even the kernel is built carefully to reduce size. This results in a system that, despite being tiny, is fully functional and surprisingly stable. The community around Tiny Core Linux may be smaller than big distros, but it is highly knowledgeable. Forums are filled with experts sharing tips, extensions, troubleshooting information, and custom scripts. This is not your typical beginner forum filled with basic questions. It's a community of people who love Linux for its technical purity. Being part of the Tiny Core community feels like being in a club of people who appreciate the beauty of minimalism and the elegance of efficient design. Whenever people discuss the future of lightweight Linux distributions, Tiny Core is always mentioned. As Linux becomes bigger and more complex, Tiny Core stands as a reminder that efficiency still matters. In a world where operating systems demand more and more resources, Tiny Core proves that small can still be powerful. It challenges developers to write efficient code. It encourages users to think about what they actually need. It shows that an operating system doesn't have to be massive to be useful. Many people who try Tiny Core for the first time come into it expecting it to be extremely limited. They think, how much can you really do with an 11 megabytes operating system? But once they start exploring the extension repository, they are shocked. There are hundreds of applications available. There are tools for programming, tools for networking, tools for development, multimedia, servers, editors, and more. You can turn Tiny Core into almost anything if you have the patience to configure it. Tiny Core speed is one of the most addictive things about it. Once you use an OS that boots instantly, runs entirely in RAM, and opens apps at lightning speed, it becomes hard to switch back to slower systems. Even mainstream Linux distros feel heavy after using Tiny Core for a while. This is one of the reasons why so many people keep Tiny Core on a USB stick as a rescue environment. When their main OS breaks, or they need to fix a system, or they need a fast temporary environment, Tiny Core is always ready. The history of Tiny Core Linux is tied closely to the Damn Small Linux project, which aimed to create a 50 megabytes Linux distribution. When DSL stopped being actively developed, Robert Shingledicker, one of its developers, continued working on the idea and created Tiny Core. His philosophy was even more extreme. Instead of trying to include everything in the base ISO, he built a modular system where users add only what they want. This shift allowed Tiny Core to reach astonishingly small sizes while remaining flexible. Over time, the system evolved but kept its core principles. In modern computing, Tiny Core Linux stands out as a symbol of elegance, efficiency, and technical mastery. It teaches us that minimalism is not a limitation, but a strength. It asks us to reconsider what we really need in an operating system. It empowers users to build systems tailored exactly to their needs, instead of accepting whatever default someone else decides. And it opens the door to creativity, experimentation, and understanding. Even though Tiny Core Linux is not for beginners, it is one of the best learning experiences for anyone who wants to understand how Linux works at a fundamental level. Running Tiny Core forces you to think about file systems, permissions, services, dependencies, and hardware. It gives you a deep appreciation for simplicity. 
It shows you how powerful Linux can be when stripped to its essence. Whether someone wants to revive an old computer, build a custom portable OS, create a lightning-fast environment, learn Linux fundamentals, or simply explore something unique, Tiny Core Linux offers something truly special. Not the future of mainstream Linux desktops, and it doesn't try to be. Instead, it represents a different direction, a direction focused on efficiency, speed, and absolute control. Tiny Core Linux is more than just tiny, it's brilliant. It's more than minimalistic, it's intentional. It's more than a distro, it's a philosophy. And for anyone who loves technology, it's an eye-opening reminder that sometimes less really is more.